there's a lot of FUD out there right now. Lots of people are saying, Bitcoin's dead, cycle's over, right? All these grifters coming out, right? Donald Trump and his kids making their own token and everything like that. Like that, this is the sign of a market top and it's, it's done. And then on top of that, we've got this terrible news from NVIDIA and an antitrust lawsuit against them from the DOJ. So there's nothing good in the market. So it seems. Welcome back, everyone. I am here to tell you not all is as grim as we think. That's right. I'm going to do a hopium. I'm going to do a hopium clip, right? Where we're going to get everybody excited because right now, apparently, market down bad and we we all not going to make it. Okay, that's, that, that's just what it is right now. Things are not looking good because bam, whatever we could throw at the wall that sticks and say, see, because this is happening, this is not good. But guess what? In all of this gloom and doom, you know what we have? We have the CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald, Howard Lutnick, who came out and just laid, he laid out the playbook for Bitcoin's legacy finance adoption. Are you ready for this? I guess the easiest way to get a clear view of where Bitcoin is going over the next five years is take a look at the last five, right? The last five Bitcoin has been an outsider in the finance business, but coming closer and closer and closer. Right now there's an ETF just starting to go a little bit mainstream, maybe a toe in the water of mainstream, but banks still can't clear it. Banks still can't transact in it. If you didn't understand what Howard was laying out right there is he is indeed laying out the playbook. He is explaining, right? Like, look, guys, you want your Bitcoin to have better purchasing value? You, you, want, you want it to go to the moon? Well, guess what? This is what we need, right? And again, he's coming from the legacy system. So he is explaining what the legacy system requires in order for Bitcoin to meet its, its full potential. I Again, I, I just, I love the hubris. Anyways, let's dive into some of the comments here because I do think it, I do think it matters. So here we go. Howard Lutnick says banks want to transact in BTC as a new asset class, but are being held back with the existing requirements of US regulators. That's why they don't hold it. But if the regulatory environment was good, you'll see the traditional financial companies go head first into Bitcoin. So this is very interesting. Because they're not talking about XRP. Cantor Fitzgerald, um, who is the custodian uh, for Tether's uh, for for Tether's holdings, um, it's interesting that they're not talking about any shitcoins. And and I know I understand people are like, well, what's Tether? Yeah, Tether's a shitcoin. Tether is an absolute shitcoin. But my point is, is that all these XRP bros that think the banks are going to use it, the banks are going to adopt it. No, nobody's fucking talking about your shitcoin, bud. Okay, nobody's talking about it. All they care about is Bitcoin. Anyways, anyways, this isn't a uh, XRP down bad episode. This is a clip about how the legacy banking system is going to um, Frankenstein Bitcoin onto itself. Okay, that's more what this is about. <laughs> anyways, let's continue because Howard did give some more some more hints here. I don't know if this is actually a good thing. Okay, but so check this out. So here, Lutnick said, if a bank were to hold your Bitcoin they would have to set aside their own money equal to that amount. So you, you hear what that is? Listen to this, guys. So that means if they're going to do that, they're going to they're going to have to essentially insure it and they are going to have to hold, right? They're going to have to hold money in kind, right? For redemption. So uh, essentially creating insurance for it. And look at the way the framing is right? Essentially having to set money aside in order to hold your Bitcoin, it's sort of a jail. That's why they don't want to hold it. See, because banks want to create money from nothing, right? There's, I mean, let's face it. Why would I want a lower rate of return when I can have a significantly higher rate of return by creating products from nothing and then charging you, me, right? Us, the little peons as much as possible for the exposure to this magical product. Anyways, this one is actually my favorite because I always talk about individual incentives, okay? And if we are to believe 
Cantor Fitzgerald, CEO. Okay, this is what he has to say. So Cantor Fitzgerald, which owns a shitload of Bitcoin, according to Lutnick, plans to launch its Bitcoin financing business with $2 billion in lending, providing leverage to BTC holders. It already handles U.S. Treasury trading with stablecoin issuer Tether. But it's more than that, guys. It's more than that, because as I explained at the beginning, Cantor Fitzgerald serves as a custodian for Tether's assets. So now we can kind of see how the picture is continuing to emerge, okay? Cantor Fitzgerald is very much a staple of the legacy banking and financial system, okay? Very much so. And Tether is doing as much as I can hate them all I want, okay? I, I can hate what they do all I want, but the truth of the matter is they... Tether is playing this game the best, okay? They are essentially Frankensteining themselves into the legacy system, and the legacy system is going to Frankenstein this whole entire thing, right, onto Bitcoin. Meaning, um, they know what they need in order to create financial products based on Bitcoin. And what they need are the banks to be able to create those financial products without the regulation, right, without the, 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 the tying of the hands that makes them hold assets in kind, right? They want to be able to, guys, this is just fractional reserve banking. And in this case, right, our current financial system has gotten used to no reserve. So you can see where the problem is here. So guys, if we want Bitcoin to grow, we're going to need to, uh, we're going to need to get those regulations in place. We're going to need to uh, kiss the ring. And, and of course, right, we're going to have to do the humiliation ritual of letting the banks produce assets out of thin air using Bitcoin as their, uh, as their backing asset, so to speak. Okay, so I mean, like, you know, what do, do I think this is a good thing? Do I think this is a bad thing? Uh, obviously, I think that creating assets out of absolutely nothing um, is a bad thing. Um, I, uh, I understand that it may create some good because it creates certain type of financial activity. I'm not going to disagree with that stuff, but I think in, in the long run, I think that this is just going back to my point that legacy banking has figured out that they can produce a bubble that is going to be significantly bigger than the mortgage crisis. That's my personal belief. And the thing is this, right? There's no two ways about it. And the reason is this, the money printing only increases. And what I'm trying to say is this, right? The national debt is at 35 trillion and counting. This doesn't stop. This doesn't go away. Do you know that last year when we paid our taxes, the, the clock, the debt clock, we stopped the debt clock for 24 hours. So I want everyone to really internalize what, what just happened. An entire year of taxes paid on one single day stop the debt clock for 24 hours, the whole country. Okay. That's it. It's a drop in the bucket. This clock is never stopping. It's never slowing down. Okay. This is where we are at. So the size of the bubbles, they have no choice, but to keep getting bigger and bigger, the money printing will just simply have to increase more and more because the money, right? The velocity of money, it's losing velocity. So what is happening is, is that in the past, they could print less money and it would have more of an effect on the economy. But now we're printing tons and tons of money and it's having a decreasing effect on the economy. Okay. So yeah, anyways, I, I didn't mean to like combine everything all together, but it kind of is, it, it kind of all plays its part. Um, because we, you know, whether people want to agree with it or not, there is going to be another asset bubble. The question is, how will it roll out? Well, I believe, I truly believe that Bitcoin, among other things, is going to be one of the instruments to allow legacy finance to do this dance and blow it up one more time. Anyways, guys, that's all I wanted to talk about today. That's the clip. I am going to catch you tomorrow. Tomorrow.